Welcome to my YouTube channel, Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry. In this video, we will look at uniform acceleration. We will use graphical analysis to generate some data along with a motion detector. And then from that data, you'll be able to develop a mathematical model in which you can characterize and understand uniform acceleration uh, in a better way. So we're gonna actually be generating two data sets here. We're gonna be dating De, uh, generating a position versus time data set and a velocity versus time data set. So backing up a moment, before we look at uniform acceleration, um, we studied constant velocity motion. So constant velocity would mean straight line motion at a steady speed. And we used the battery operated uh, toy cars to, to generate data on constant velocity. We, through discussion, realized that if we can gather position values and time values, that we can generate some graphs and mathematical models to understand constant velocity. So again, this is what constant velocity looks like. And in that first lab, we use stopwatches and meter sticks to gather our data. We're gonna bump up the technology a little bit here and use the motion detector to gather position and time data for this lab. Um, it's basically gonna do the same thing that we did, but it's gonna generate that data in a little bit of a more precise way um, and give us some good measurements to work with. So in order to cause or give, the, give ourselves a good example of uniform acceleration, we're gonna take one of these low friction physics carts and we're gonna make a ramp and then simply let the cart fall down the ramp. If you listen, you can get a hint that this is uniform acceleration. You can sense that something is changing as the cart goes down the ramp. And of course, if the cart starts from rest and then it has speed by the end of the ramp, it must have accelerated. In physics, acceleration is any change in velocity. So in this case, the change in velocity would be the change in speed the cart experiences as it goes down the ramp. A couple things about this ramp. It is 120 centimeters long, so 1.2 meters. Um, this is about the meter mark if you're measuring from this end. And one of the things that um, we need to pay attention to when using a motion detector is that it cannot pick up objects really close to the detector. We need to be about 20 centimeters away. So um, this is actually marked off. My zero point is here. My 100 centimeter point is here. And then we've got 120 centimeters at this end. So when I gather my data, I'm gonna try to start it at about that mark here, 20 centimeters or so away from the detector. One of the other things that I'm going to do is I'll set the data collection. I'll wait a moment until I drop the cart because I'd like to catch that data point where the cart is released from rest. That's gonna be our zero time point. So that's something that when we generate this data set, we're gonna have some extra data points kind of before the data that we're really interested in. We will likely also have some data points after I catch it at the end of the ramp. So let's go ahead and get graphical analysis set up. There's some settings that I want to play around with. I'll go ahead and plug in the detector. You'll hear it start clicking. So on the screen, you can see I've got a position versus time graph and a velocity versus time graph up by default. I'm also going to be interested in the data table here. And we're actually going to take our data points and carry those over to Google Sheets for our analysis in this particular um, run of data. I'm going to change up the sampling rate to 10 samples per second just so that we don't have an overwhelming amount of data. I'm also going to go into my graph options and set the maximum position that I'm looking at. Right now it runs to two meters away. 
I'm only going to be 120 centimeters from the detector. So maybe I'll just set that at 1.5. This is for the position graph. And I'll set scaling to manual. And then for the velocity graph, I'm not expecting to see negative velocities here. That would require something to move towards the detector. So I'm going to set the minimum velocity to zero. And I'm going to set the maximum velocity to about, I'm going to set it to about 1.5. So 1.5 meters per second would mean the object is covering 1.5 meters in every second. I don't think we're going to get anything moving that fast in this particular lab. Another thing that I want to check um, real quick is under graph options. I'd like to see these as data points uh, rather than lines um, because we're going to be analyzing them as individual data points. Let me set that up for both graphs. And then over here under data set one, we're going to get time data, we're going to get position data, and then the software can also calculate the corresponding velocity values at each time. So again, I want to release the cart. From rest. And I'm going to let some data points collect before that release point. Here we go. All right, so we can see on our screen a couple of important points, the position graph uh, appears to be parabolic. The velocity graph appears to be linear. That will be helpful in your data analysis. Um, we've got individual data points plotted here. And again, there's going to be some data that we really kind of are not so interested in. We'd be interested somewhere in this region. Before I release the cart, it's moving with zero velocity and we see that the position stayed steady too for a while. So that's one of the things you want to determine from the data set. Which data point do we want to consider time zero? The point that I allowed the cart to start moving. And that's something that you'll want to kind of um, look at in your data analysis. And you can ignore the data points before that zero point and after that zero point. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to run three trials with a different steepness each time. So this time we'll go with two books. So of course this is going to affect the data points in our second run. I'm going to just go ahead and hit collect and it will save the first run as its own data set. So again, setting it up. Again, taking a quick glance at the data, you can see the shapes are the same, but of course, where those data points are plotting out is different with uh, two books. So let's do three books for our last data set. So again, less data points because it's moving faster. I would ignore kind of what happens here. That's after I caught the, the cart. Um, we would pay attention to the data points in here and in here. Okay. So for my students, I will share with you a um, 
Google Sheet with some data pulled into it. For those of you watching this on YouTube, I will also put a link in the description that would take you to the data that I measured for this investigation. So thank you for watching and enjoy that data analysis. Have a good day.